Hey everyone, it's Ankylosaur. I hope you're all doing well. For today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the sweetest decks from the Sanctuary Open series number 5. 26 players signed up for this event, and there was some really fantastic gameplay all afternoon, plus a whole slew of unique deck lists. The tournament was won by Jonathan, piloting Gretchen Titchwillow. And there was a second Gretchen, as well as a Malcolm Breaches deck in the finals making a great showing for combo decks after a bit of a tournament drought for the strategy recently. But there were a ton of under-the-radar lists that showed up as well, and that's what I want to talk about today. Each of the decks in this video have proved themselves with at least one win throughout the course of the event, and I'm excited to see them develop even further, especially with Modern Horizons 3 coming out very shortly. I'll have a link to all of the decks from the event below in the video description, so you'll be able to follow along as I break them down. But with all that out of the way, let's talk some sweet brews. First up, we have our fourth finalist in Val Candlekeep Researcher paired with Agent of the Shadow Thieves. This is also a combo deck based around Freed from the Real, Val herself, and a mana filter like Energy Refractor. Val's mana can't be used to cast spells from your hand, but it can be used to activate the ability on Energy Refractor turning the colorless mana she makes into blue, which can then be used to untap her with Freed from the Reel. Each time you tap Vol, will generate three colorless mana, and as it only takes two colorless to make a blue with the filter to untap her, you can generate infinite mana this way. Then, it's just a matter of finding one of your mana sinks, like Bloodright Invoker or Vampire Opportunist, which will convert that infinite mana into infinite life loss for your opponents. The deck is very consistent and plays a strong control game as well. It's full of counter magic, redundant combo pieces, and tutors to find them. And with Val in the command zone, the deck always has access to one of its most important combo pieces. So congrats to Val for making the finals. Next, just missing out on the top four, was Wrath Weatherlight Stalwart. This is another combo control deck, this time looking to assemble the classic Archaeomancer Ghostly Flicker combo. With Archaeomancer on the board, you can blink it and another permanent with an Enters the Battlefield trigger with Ghostly Flicker, using Archaeomancer's ability to return Ghostly Flicker to your hand. With a Peregrine Drake as the second target, you get to untap 5 lands when the Drake comes into play, and as Ghostly Flicker only costs 3 mana to cast, you can easily generate infinite mana this way. If you have a cap size, you can cast it with buyback to bounce every single permanent your opponents control including lands, back to their hands. But more efficient is to use an extort creature, like Basilica Guards or Syndic of Tithes, to extort off of each copy of Ghostly Flicker, draining the table out and winning the game on the spot. The deck is also full of cards that generate token creatures, like Clowning Around, Gather the Townsfolk, or Charge of the Mites. These spells do double duty with Wrath's first ability, both giving you creatures to tap to draw cards, and serving as spells to cast to trigger his ability once you have creatures around. This will build you up some serious card advantage while you're looking for your combo pieces. And don't forget Wrath's second ability, which, when you achieve infinite mana, can also be used as a mana sink to make your tokens infinitely large, potentially closing out the game all on their own. Finally, the deck is full of counter magic, both to protect your combo and to control the board. This includes some counter spells that don't see as much play in the format, like Sinister Sabotage, Rewind, and Dream Fracture, all of which give you some extra value when you cast them, and, with Wrath in play, turn into Cantrips when you tap some tokens as well. Just below Wrath in the standings, coming in 6th place, was Abdel Adrian and Street Urchin. This is a unique take on the more typical Abdel decks, which look to take advantage of Abdel's ability to exile your own permanents to generate absurd amounts of value. Generally speaking, the deck combines a board full of mana rocks, plus cantripping permanents such as Golden Egg, with flicker spells to blink Abdel and reuse his triggered ability, as well as an Archaeomancer style effect like Ardent Elementalist to rebuy the flicker spell and use it again. You float all the mana from your mana rocks, then use Abdel to tuck them away and any other permanents you have with an Enters the Battlefield trigger on it. Then, when you blink Abdel, all those permanents come back giving you your mana rocks untapped and ready to be used again. With enough rocks in play, this can generate infinite mana, 
as well as infinite soldier tokens, which can then be sacrificed to Street Urchin to shoot down all of your opponents. You can also trigger Impact Tremors infinite times, or if you have a Stirring Bard in play, you can venture into the Undercity over and over again, triggering the Trap Room each loop through the dungeon to kill the table in chunks of 5 damage at a time. Next, in 7th place, we have the Sphinx Summoner deck putting up another great result. This is an artifact-based combo deck, looking to assemble an Ashnod's Altar Loop with two Mirror Retriever-style creatures that return an artifact to hand when they die, a cost reducer like Foundry Inspector, and the Ashnod's Altar itself. You can generate infinite mana by sacrificing the Mirror Retriever and Workshop Assistant to the Ashnod's Altar, which will also give you infinite historic spell cast triggers, letting you kill the table with something like Cabal Paladin. Meanwhile, the deck has an incredibly strong plan B involving its multiple flying creatures, including its commander, plus cranial plating to deal massive amounts of evasive damage and knock someone out in just a swing or two. Rounding out the top 8, we have a sweet crackling drake list, which is a commander that used to see a lot of play, but has fallen by the wayside this past year or so, so it's great to see the deck put up results again. This version of the deck runs a lot of looting creatures, like Academy Wall, Windrider Wizard, and Merfolk Looter itself, allowing you to rip through your deck and fill up your graveyard with instants and sorceries to grow your commander. It also reduces the cost of your other big beaters, Talarian Terror and Cryptic Serpent, which are great at closing out the game. One of the cool things about this deck is the sweeper package that you get to run. Swirling Sandstorm will clean up just about any non-flyer in the format, and Threshold is trivial to achieve in this deck. Breath Weapon is a powerful instant speed board wipe, which was chosen over Fiery Cannonade for its ability to take out Malcolm and his pirate friends. And Fade Away can decimate token strategies and other go-wide decks in the right situation. These are great additions to Crackling Drake's control package, and I can imagine very similar lists growing in popularity again going forward. In ninth place, just missing the top 8 on tiebreakers, is Mystic Enforcer, which you may remember from previous events. The deck is still spicy though, so I'm going to talk about a few updates that were made since the last tournament. This is a Voltron style self mill deck, looking to fill up the graveyard with cards like Colossal Badger and Circle of the Land Druid in order to turn on the commander's threshold ability, making it a 4 mana 6 6 flyer with protection from black. There are far fewer aggressive auras in the deck this time around, instead, counting on the evasive commander being able to take someone out with just a few swings on its own and instead running a bunch of protection spells to keep Mystic Enforcer alive. As many games against other aggressive or mid-range decks will turn into a race, this list is also running several fogs to swing things in your favor, or use something like Tangle to keep potential blockers locked down for an extra turn's worth of damage. I definitely recommend checking out the new version of this list, as the deck continues to grow and evolve, and it's exciting to see each new iteration do better and better. Next up, in 10th place, we have a really sweet one in Hollow Marauder. This is a new uncommon from Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and this deck is all about ripping apart your opponent's hands, either with the commander itself, with creatures like Burglar Rat and Virus Beetle, or even giant discard spells like Delirium Skeins to leave everyone empty-handed all at once. The list is also running several ways to cheat its commander out faster, using creatures that generate large amounts of mana, like Overeager Apprentice and the Incredible Soldevi Adnate to get down Hollow Marauder as quickly as possible. There is also an infinite combo in the deck, which I can do my best to break down, as it's a little convoluted. First of all, you need a Songs of the Damned and a very full graveyard to generate a whole bunch of black mana. Then, a Biblioplex Assistant to put songs back on top of your library. You need a Sacrifice Outlet, Spark Reaper being the best of them, to get the Biblioplex Assistant into the graveyard, plus a way to draw the Songs of the Damned again. Spark Reaper's ability will draw it for you, but otherwise you need a cycling creature to get back the songs. And then you need Disturbed Burial, which you can cast with buyback to get the Assistant out of your graveyard and back into your hand. The end result of this is, you generate all the black mana you could ever need, and then you cast Disturbed Burial with buyback on anything you like from your graveyard. For instance, a Lotless Giant that you discarded earlier, dealing a bunch of damage to one of your opponents. Then you sacrifice it to your sack outlet, rebuy it with Disturbed Burial, and repeat until everyone is dead. 
It's not the easiest combo to pull off, but it is a way to immediately end the game once you have all the pieces put together. And it's a really cool line I've never seen anyone try before. So props to Hollow Marauder for making that happen. Finally, we have one last deck to talk about, and that's Mayhem Devil. This is a deck that, as you might expect, leans heavily on the format sacrifice effects with creatures like Fleshbag Marauder and Chain Devil, not only killing off a creature from each of your opponents, but also giving you several Mayhem Devil triggers to deal damage divided up as you see fit. As has been the theme of the tournament, this deck is also running a combo of its own, this time the Mogwarts combo from 60 Card Popper. Basically, with a Skirk Prospector and Putrid Goblin in play, you can cast First Day of Class, which will give any creature entering the battlefield under your control this turn a plus one plus one counter. Then, you sacrifice Putrid Goblin to the Prospector, generating a red mana, but more importantly, giving you a Persist trigger on the Putrid Goblin, returning it to play with a minus one minus one counter on it. As minus one minus one counters and plus one plus one counters cancel each other out, this means that the Putrid Goblin has no counters on it at all, making it ready to persist back again and again and again. This generates infinite red mana, but, more importantly, with Mayhem Devil in play, gives you infinite damage you can throw around, killing your opponents one ping at a time. I've seen people try to make Mogwarts work in PDH before, and it's cool to see the combo show up in an Aristocrat-style deck as a win con with its commander. So, there you have it. The spiciest decks with at least one win from Sanctuary Open number 5. Huge thanks to Bobby Fine for running another excellent tournament, and to everyone who played in the event and made it a success. As I mentioned before, I'll have links to all the deck lists over on Sanctuary PDH's Moxfield page down in the video description below. And as always, if you have any feedback or want to talk any more about any of these decks, please let me know. I'm very happy to hear from you and to chat about this or any of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll be back with another CPDH video soon. Bye!